All right, so this presentation is about how to animate for a Hollywood movie. Um, so my name's Eddie Chu. I'm an animator of 15 years, um, founder and educator at Griffin Animation Academy. Uh, it's an online school of animation to help bring junior and intermediate animators uh, to their next level of high-end animation. So just a little bit about me, I'm from um, Port Hedland, Australia. It's in the northwest of Australia. Uh, it's a small mining town. Um, yeah, there's not much out there, just dry hot weather, a couple of spiders, crocs, uh, yeah, all the good stuff. I've always thought it uh, resembled Mars, um, so every time I see a photo of it, I just think it's Port Hedland, that's where I'm from. Uh, so, as mentioned earlier, um, just a couple of movies I've worked on, um, which is uh, The Latest Spider-Man, Aladdin, um, Ninja Turtles, uh, Batman, Superman, uh, Star Trek, couple of Hobbits, Pac Rim, a whole bunch more. Um, I worked in many studios uh, throughout <coughs> Australia, through Melbourne, Sydney. Um, it, it then took me to other countries like uh, London, New Zealand, um, and now currently Vancouver, Canada. Uh, so while growing up, I love watching movies, reading comics, watching anime. So all of this was, yeah, just like a, a dream come true for me. Uh, so what is animation? Animation is a state of being full of life or vigor, uh, liveliness, spirit, high spirits, energy, enthusiasm, eagerness, excitement, vigor, vibrancy, exuberance, bounciness, sparkle, dash, uh, all great words to describe animation. Um, it's essentially the technique of photographing successive drawings or positions of puppets. Uh, or 3D models to create an illusion of movement when the movie is shown as a sequence. So this is the 12 principles of animation, um, just all working together. Um, I didn't create this, I found it online, but it shows just quickly how everything uh, is applied to a show that we work on. So that incorporates uh, squash and stretch, timing, anticipation, staging, follow through and overlapping action, uh, straight ahead or pose to pose, slow in and out, arcs, exaggeration, secondary animation, uh, action, uh, solid drawing or that's just like traditional and appeal. And this is the bouncing ball exercise, which incorporates all of the principles we just saw. Um, it's usually the first exercise every animator undertakes, um, just to learn like all the principles. Uh, and it's a very like basic shape. And here it is again. Uh, so I used um, the bouncing ball uh, to kind of plan out um, this shot I worked on on Spider-Verse. Um, I'll just show it here. So this shot is uh, basically Miles just getting thrown back by like an explosion. Um, so he's pretty much a bouncing ball here, like the momentum and even like the timing and the beats. So while planning this shot, um, I looked at uh, obviously a bouncing ball and applied, like I said, the, the beats and the timing. And if we look at the bouncing ball again, here's the, um, the line of action and the arcs. So I kind of just tracked the lines uh, and each pose and each spacing. Um, 
just to see where it goes. So if you apply that to a shot like this one, you can see that you can just um, track like, like I track the wrists and I track the feet and you can see the path that it's on and apply you know, a couple of those uh, principles to the shot. So another couple of shots I worked on um, uh, with a house fight. I don't know if everyone's seen it, but the first shot here didn't make it into the movie, but it made it onto the DVD, so I managed to grab it. Um, so the you can see here it's pretty chaotic, and and it hooks up to this shot. Um, but the basic flow is. Uh, having Miles in the background of all of that and kind of moving screen right and I wanted to just quickly go through how I tackled a big shot like this so I would focus on say one character at a time one or two because everyone has their own kind of battles going on so I chose Miles here and then I kind of would hide everyone else and I would just work on him moving screen right, trying to get the attention of Spider-Man. And then I would go to Spider-Ham here um, and the Tentacle. They have their own uh, battle going on, so I'd just animate them. And then this robot and this uh, Tentacle. So they'd be doing their own thing. And then Gwen here and Scorpion having their own fight. So I'd put them over the screen left. Uh, Peter Park here with the USB. So he's trying to flick it to Miles and he's battling the, the tentacle. And then there's uh, Tombstone and Noah at the back having their own fist fight. So the best way is to kind of just break up Break them into groups and just kind of work on them separately. And this shot is um, Miles running to get the USB and just kind of is stopped by a Doc Ock tentacle. Um, and a couple of things I use from the principles. Um, is dynamic and clear posing so you would make sure each pose of um, the hero or any character in a shot is clear uh, so there's no overlapping of, of limbs um, you know the arms are nice and clear sticking out of the body um, you can see the tension in the fingers I wanted to keep them open so you can see that in the silhouette so essentially if you switch off the lights and all you see with the silhouette could you still tell the intent of the character? Um, the direction and line of action in the shot is everything's moving screen, um, screen right. So the flow of energy is kind of coming from down and up into miles, and that forces uh, the physics would force miles to change shape so his head would kind of come over, his arms would come out, his spine would curve, so all that energy is going into his body. Uh, another technique we used was um, creating smear frames to fake motion boy. So in, in this uh, image on the left there's no motion boy but then the one in the middle here uh, wanted to kind of fake the quickness of his hands coming in so I cloned his arms and kind of just deformed the mesh so they're coming in together along with some lines here just to fake that quick motion and it's also a stylistic choice uh, of the show um, it 
they get that from traditional animation. Uh, the image on the right here, I did the same thing. So I cloned the mesh of his arm and kind of just warped it and bent it to show fast motion moving up. Uh, so for this uh, presentation, I created this animation just to break down like the passes and um, just what we do each week to add and build up a, a shot. Um, I created a, a week course uh, which helps um, kind of break down each step. Uh, it's pretty much using every uh, like movie that needs animation. Uh, it's just a it's basically a layered process of building up uh, iterations in your animation. Just show you the shot. This is kind of what I came up with. Um, so initially, before like starting, I just thought thought of an idea, and I thought, okay, I want to punch a dinosaur, and first thing I did was, so if we go back, so I googled, um, google image punching a dinosaur, and it turns out a lot of people love punching dinosaurs, so there's <laughs> lots of references, um, and it's good to see how different artists uh, pose out the idea and how they would punch a dinosaur, essentially. There's Frankenstein, I think. So you get to see the poses of the dinosaurs reacting, as well as different characters punching a dinosaur. I think that's Superman. Superman again. I think he has something against dinosaurs. So I started looking at 3D rigs um, in this Jurassic World. Just seeing the type of dinosaur I wanted to animate. Also again looking at poses. I really love this pose. Um, it's very dynamic, very ferocious. Uh, then I got this um, this guy as a hero. Uh, it's from a, a website by my mate Carl Figgins. So if you want to purchase some cool rigs, go to his website. So I thought, yeah, this guy would be cool. Then I started looking at um, just movement and references from other movies. So I looked at obviously Jurassic World some cool uh, roles there so you really just start collecting a database of references it's even for your um, just for your memory bank as well um, so if you're ever like working and getting creative and you're in flow you can kind of just have this reference in your head and you know you've kind of seen it somewhere before so there's some cool t-rexes getting smashed in Kong it's a nice walk it's always good to start with a walk just to figure out like the personality of the character some really nice heavy stuff there then I looked at anime I don't know what it's from but I love the just the clear posing and the uh, it just feels like they're heavy hits some Captain America punch love that hit. One 
punch man cool poses and just a power of one hit another cool reaction hit so here I started um, just laying out the idea basic idea of blocking it out we call it um, figuring out the camera um, figuring out the timing of the shot what I want the, uh, the guy to do so I just wanted him to essentially just hit the, the dinosaur and kind of roll out of it some references here just throw it in So here I wanted to show the, the reference I kind of mixed together. So like this, this person running and then jumping and leaping. And just rolling. So you kind of stitch together different references. And then I wanted to add, uh, just to mix up the timing of the shot. Um, because for a while it was just feeling very um, monotonous I guess it was just a straight line from A to B so I wanted to add in some slow-mo hang time in the middle so I've got references from I think that's Skyscraper and Thanos there and Fast and Furious <coughs> and then goes back into real time here And this is uh, in my Maya scene. I use Maya to animate, um, and it's cloning the mesh uh, on every pose just to see the flow of movement, the energy where it's going, uh, how it feels in the Maya scene, how it feels in camera. Uh, it's also a good way to uh, kind of frame each uh, each part of your shot. It really helps. I think this workflow. So you can see it from all angles. And I'm just uh, just layering in more more detail but I think I started to I didn't like where the dinosaur was going so I decided to add in more um, just more dynamic and excitement to it so I had him entering while smashing some rocks which I thought would look cool in effects and and just start roaring earlier before it gets hit So now here, there's a quick uh, pass of him getting hit. Still feels very soft. So just again, slowly working into more of the, the refinement of the animation. Trying to make it heavier and snappier, getting better poses. Now it gets into more like the detailed granular stuff. So while I was working on the animation, I got my mate uh, Ganesh to start working on some effects. So, like footsteps, you can see like uh, the dirt kind of flying up gave him an idea of maybe some of the, the bit of rockier crumbling and then the, during the land is a bit of sand flying up just 
another pass again on you know trying to get like things like the timing of the jaw hit trying to make it feel more impactful the land still feels a bit soft here on this pass I added in um, some 2d effects cards so like the smoke um, again it's just a stylistic choice and, uh, that's where I wanted to get the shot and you can see I was tracking the arts here in a line of action as discussed before with the um, just to see like where the I want to see where the hips were, were moving and the, the wrist to make sure they're moving in a nice smooth line I'll just give myself notes here I'm posing So yeah, tracking modern dinosaur. To me, it was feeling very floaty, and I wanted to give it a bit more snap and more weight. Added some blood. See another you know, passive effects. You can see the all the rocks getting smashed. That's pretty cool. You can see dirt flying up. So yeah, each uh, each pass is just obviously you're moving forward to with more, um, I guess, finesse. So now I had Dinosaur, instead of just collapsing down to the ground, um, I wanted him to have a, I guess, another like cliffside on the screen right, so I had the Dinosaur kind of fall onto that and then hit the ground so that it just has I don't know, it just makes it more interesting rather than just falling straight down in a straight line so plus I wanted to add in more rocks falling and the playback's a bit choppy you can see Then I added in um, the rock in the guy's hand smashing. So there's a pass there. And yeah, this is uh, essentially uh, the I guess the final of it. Just added in some last minute like effects cards and. Uh, I had him entering, I had a dinosaur entering lower, so it just looks more menacing, and you can see his tail kind of uh, moving around, swishing around. And I wanted to show you guys my demo reel just to, I guess so you can see, um, what a what an animator what kind of shots an animator works on essentially uh, when you start working on movies um, so I'll just play that for you
So if you want to reach out to me for my eight week online course or find more learning material, uh, just visit my social media or even just connect on LinkedIn. Um, if anyone out there is still deciding whether they'd like to pursue a career in animation, I'd just say go for it. It definitely requires passion, commitment, tenacity, but the movies you work on and the people you meet uh, a great part of that incredible journey. So if a young boy from a town resembling Mars can do it, so can you. Thanks guys. Um, we're actually just under 30 minutes right now. Um, so uh, start the questions then. Sure, yeah. um, so I'll just switch over. Questions for Eddie? Um, you said that you use my uh, career animation. Um, what kind of add-ons do you use uh, to streamline my uh, Sorry, I, all I got was. Uh, you I said you Maya, use and then, Maya. Yes. To do animation, what kind of add-ons do you use to streamline the animation process? Um, nothing else really. Uh, I might use. Uh, something like After Effects um, to spit out like all the image uh, sequences for the references um, but for actual animation nothing really um, I use a I purchased a anim tool shelf called Animbot um, yeah which is very handy um, but other than that it's very uh, just stock Maya just essentially just setting up your hotkeys I think it's important um, yeah nothing else really because I kind of move around a lot different studios so to carry like other add-ons and yeah it gets a bit of a hassle yeah thanks for your question so what was the experience with animating the smear, the smears on Spider-Verse? Um, like all the lines on the stage and how did that kind of work? Um, I personally loved it because I, I've been working in uh, visual effects for a few years. So that's all kind of animating to camera, uh, realistic, like photorealistic animation. So when I get a chance to work on something stylistic like Spider-Verse, um, using smear frames and creating, designing lines and action lines for your shot was uh, very uh, liberating, I guess. Um, it's very simple, very simple process. They made it really easy for us. Uh, and we would kind of just design something and pitch it. And most of the time the directors and Adam supervisors yeah they loved it so <coughs> so it's fun yeah okay. uh, any other questions um, i was wondering if when um and i mean like so what is your work for research, research when i mean cultural realistic pictures uh so a lot of um a lot of youtube uh, a lot of stock uh, videos online um, and also shooting um, footage of yourself depends on what it is like if it's uh, if it's a human character you can just go out and shoot footage um, so a lot of times you would get your reference shoot your footage start animating and even halfway you'd find out you have to shoot more reference so you can grab you and you can grab your mates and just shoot more so the more reference you have the better it is um, if it's animals you just find it online there's a whole bunch of like yeah there's a lot of footage online youtube and yeah getty images and yeah and it's all available how much would you look up the surface, surface of the creature, creature to like, like anatomy, anatomy structure, structure and muscles? 
uh, you would pay very close attention, that's for sure. Like, um, say on a quadruped, you would notice um, there's a lot of uh, shoulder movement. Uh, so when the arms lock out the th um, and the legs lock out, uh, you have to know which points. You have to know essentially what the bone structure and the joints are doing. Like, it would lock out on, you know, the passing over and then um, things like that. So you have a good understanding of what's going on. Um, because you also have to adjust the rotation of the hips and the chest in accordance to that. Um, again, when you look at your reference, you'll, you'll see all the details uh, underneath like the fur. You can see the muscles working. Uh, yeah, it's all super important. But then like um, once animation is done, it gets sent to the effects department, which usually creates um, a muscle system on top so it adds to animation mm -hmm. any other questions ready what's the most fun part of being an animator, animator for larger, larger films, films? Um, watching the movie <laughs> when it's finished usually that's pretty rewarding um, like working on it it's fun um, you can kind of um, you can get excited about where the movie's going and you know you start seeing like effects work like we saw earlier you see like lighting come through so you start to see what your shot looks like and that's pretty exciting but actually going to the movies you know, bringing all your mates and your family. That's pretty awesome. You get to watch a movie together that you worked on. Even like crowd reaction, um, that's pretty awesome. So, and when kids love your movies as well, they get super excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also when people dress up, right, for, for a movie you worked on, that's pretty cool as well. Uh, any more questions? Any more questions? Okay. okay. Um, um, I have a question. Have a question. Sure. So, uh, some, some people, people once they've animated, animated on a shot, like, like a few years later, later they don't like looking back, back at their shot because they see all the mistakes. mistakes. How do you mm -hmm. feel about looking at those work? Uh, for me, it's the opposite. Like, I can't look at a shot when it's too fresh because sometimes it's still very painful. <laughs> but I can like look at it later and I was like, oh, okay, it's worth it because. Especially when it holds up, like if you look at a shot years later and you think, oh, it still looks great, then you know you've done something right. Because a lot of shows, a lot of shots can look outdated very fast. So for me, I don't mind, yeah. Great. Um, great. So if there's no more questions for Eddie, then that's it. So thanks everyone. Thanks guys. Eddie, can you just hang out for five minutes? Sure, yep. Yeah. Um, okay, guys, uh, I think we'll talk. So, uh, unless you have a question for Eddie and you'd like to speak to them directly, if you guys could just get the building, please, the way you're game. Uh, thank you guys all for coming, and I hope you had a good time at the call. Spider-Verse, I saw some behind the scenes how every line was a perfect Did you have to animate every single line of the shot? Or were there um, Yeah, so we had to, when it came to like um, some of the facial lines, we would animate, yes, um, such as like wrinkles or skin folds. Um, that would all be animated, um, like stuff in the eyebrows and the, and the forehead. 
Yeah, so we'd have to animate that. Um, <coughs> things around the, the hands and the, and the face, um, like the jawline, we didn't have to touch, but details in the face, yeah, we did. Yeah, thank you for your question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seem to be using a, a website, website uh, uploading different animation uh, what, what, what was that? Uh, that is um, Sync Sketch. Um, I'll type it in here. Thank you. Um, so it's, it's kind, it's kind of, of the viewing stuff, is it? Uploading lots of different ones, yeah, pretty much. It's um, because I work freelance as well, um, and I also have students of my own, so I get them to upload all their work onto Sync Sketch. And that way, I can draw on top of it, leave them annotations, um, and also when I record their feedback, I can just upload it there as well. It has sound and everything, and it's uh, it's very quick, very easy to use. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>